Hello! This is another video about the Melda Productions MSUPA Looper Looping VST plugin. And in this one, I just wanted to talk a bit about these uh, multi parameter functions uh, that are just sit here, sit here over the right hand side of the plugin. Uh, now, as I understand it, these multi parameters, this is something that's common to all of Melda's plugins. And it's a way, sort of within their plugins, to create sort of macro functions and to bind several controls to just sort of one button. So you can do, you know, you can do transitions where you need to change a lot of controls at once quite easily, just using one control. And it struck me that it might be a good way within M Super Looper to start binding different functions and several functions to one pedal on my foot, on my um, MIDI foot pedal, pedal down here. Um, so sort of the background to this is what, what I was trying to do was create uh, or recreate a a sort of workflow I had in my old looper, which was Mobius looper. And there was a scripting function in that where you could you could do the same thing. You could you could write little scripts that would bind several functions to one to one control. So you could you could obviously set up a, a quite an efficient s set of controls on your foot pedal. So in this example, what, what I would want to do is um, so if we go from right to left, I want this number five pedal to do the forward and reverse on my loop track two. I want number four to do forward and reverse on loop track one. And then I want three and two to do mute and play on one and two. So that means what I really want to have is this number one. I want that control to do record. So I want it to record on a track for a certain number of bars and then immediately select the next track. So I want to make a record and next button. Now in this video, I'm going to go through the sort of the steps I took to find a solution that works. I still haven't got something that, that's 100% perfect, but I thought it would be useful just to go through some of the attempts I made to sort of make that happen, uh, where I went wrong, so that obviously um, people who are watching this can sort of avoid the same pitfalls. So this is the first example. What, what I did, first of all, was just quite a basic thing, that, which obviously on reflection didn't work. So I thought, what would happen if I just bound both the play and sorry, the record and next functions to pedal one on my controller. Uh, this is obviously the, the the window where you set all your your functions and and your your controllers and and what buttons do what. Um, I won't talk through this. I did say in a previous video I was going to do a video on this, but there's there's already one by um, Chandler Guitar, um, who posts a lot on the Melda forums, and I think he's a sort of officially affiliated with the company. So I'm not going to I'm not going to go through all that again because that video already exists. Um, I'll probably link to it in the description below, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to show you what I did first of all. So obviously I went uh, select target parameter and record is the first one. And then you hit learn, you press your key, um, which in my example is my MIDI pedal outputs note number 39, which is D sharp two. I don't know why it does that, but that's just what I made it do. And then you want this to be a switch. Um, so anything that I'll turn learn off first. So anything that you want to switch and stay in position should be a switch. Um, any button that you, want, that you want to stay momentarily would be an on off. If you made record an on off, it would only keep recording for the amount of time you held the button down. So record should be a switch. And then I went down to this one, number two, selected next. Again, learn it, learn it to the same key. <laughs> and that does trigger record as well. So when I unlearn, I'm just going to cancel that record. And then this one does want to be an on off because you just want next to hit and then go next track. You don't want to hold the button down effectively. So we've got record and next both bound to number 39, which is pedal one on my foot pedal here. And obviously that doesn't work. And I'll show you how it doesn't work very quickly with an example. So if I pl hit press play and if it's going to start recording, I would, I would hit the button. And you can see already what's happened there is that it's it's done next track before before record. So you've got an empty track one, and then you're recording onto track two. I mean, you could continue like that, and you know, record on the on the next track. But you would always have an empty track one, so it's not it's not really an ideal way to go. So what you really want to do, you want to create other ways to to trigger that next command at a different time to the record. And again, I'm going to show you a few ways that I attempted that. 
uh, in the rest of this video. So just reset that and get things back. So this is the first method I found to combine functions onto one key. And I actually discovered this by accident when I was messing around with some of the settings in the multi-parameter menus. Uh, what I actually ended up doing was creating a, a toggle switch. So it, it records the first time you press the button, second time it goes onto the next track and keeps switching between those two functions. And um, it's not what I went with in the end, but it, I thought it'd be useful to show how to create a button that does toggle between two functions like that because it's quite quite a cool little thing um so let's just first go to the midi settings i'm just going to remove record and next i created on the last one i'm going to load up the multi-parameter and make this into a switch uh switch time zero uh value mode i don't really know what this means but if you set it by first parameter it seems to work and just to note that when you um when you first change that from normal to switch See this um, button up here, so it goes from becoming a a sort of uh, control from that goes from 0 to 100%, currently on 50, to being an, an on-off switch. So that's quite a nice little feature that the, the interface actually updates to reflect uh, the control that you've created. So it's a uh, bright first parameter, put both of these down to zero, and then add a record function on here. And I'm just gonna leave all these settings the same. Oops, and then create a next. So this is the next track. And then you just invert it using the first parameters range. So what that does, it, it will do exactly the same as the first button, only in reverse. Um, so if I call this record and next, and then we go into the MIDI controls. Let's just test it actually, so. Next, next time I press it, it records. Next. So now we just want to bind this to a key on the foot pedal. So go to the MIDI notes, uh, select the target parameter, target parameter, and it's, it's named it here already in the list. So you can see it's quite easy to find parameter one, record next. Uh, again, we want it to be a switch. And then we just learn it. Hit pedal one, turn learn off. And now we should have a key on the pedal that will record the first time I press it, select the next track the next time I press it, and so on and so on. So I can just create a little recording now, which I will do. We we'll just need to turn immediate track switch on. that there <laughs> i messed it up a little bit because i forgot to switch onto the last track but i i got there in the end but um yeah you can see you can see how that works so you've got a nice button that does two functions and you just switch back and forth between them um i might not want to use that in a live scenario because th there's always the chance that you you slip and you don't quite hit the pedal and then you end up on the wrong function and you end up doing the wrong things in the wrong order so i'll go on and show you uh, what i did next in terms of creating a button that would do both things on one press. So in this example, I'm gonna show you the, the whole sort of journey I took from getting it kind of working and then getting an actual working solution. So what, what I did here, I thought it, it would be a good idea instead of having a toggle to have what we had in the first example where both commands were triggered at the same time by the same button, 
but to have a delay on the next so that you you press the record it start recording and then it wait and then it would do the next button so i thought well maybe there's maybe there's an option in there in the multi parameters that that can give you that control and it turns out there is um but <laughs> it's not that easy to use so i'm going to show you this now so what i did so i created another multi parameter this time and this one i created as a trigger and the trigger has a switch time so this will just hit the hit the button once as an on off rather than a switch because this is going to be our next button we want the next button to be a an on off trigger and uh i think i set these both to naught and value mode by first parameter and we create a next control And then what we do here, so you have a switch time. And I realized that does actually control how long it takes the switch to engage. So that is what we want. And if you click on it, you get this little menu pops up. So you can, you can put a time in by milliseconds or you can put it in by um, musical divisions. So I figured, well, we'll put four because it's four bars, four bar loop. We want to go to the next track after four bars. Um, what it does, it, it puts in a, a millisecond time, so it calculates. It's not a true sync, so like if you're using a delay plugin, plug you would have like you know eights, quarters, halves, and it would it would keep it synced to ten tempo. But it calculates, it just calculates an amount in milliseconds based on the current tempo you've got. And I'll come on to later why that's not great, um, because you might not always want to be working at the same tempo or the same uh, the same length of bars for each of your loops um, but in this one example where we're, we're using all four bars for every track um, it does seem to work but in this first example it won't work and i'll show you why so i'm just going to name this i'm going to call it delayed next and then we're going to set up the midi binding again so go to notes and um, so we want this one button to do record and the, de the delayed next. So again, uh, so record, we want to be a switch. Uh, select parameter, record, and then learn. Turn learn off. Right, the next one, so this is, this is gonna be our delayed next, which has already been named here in the list, parameter one, delayed next. And that also is a switch. And again, going to bind that to the same key. So learn that. So then learn off. Just cancel that record that we uh, triggered by pressing the record button because obviously they're, they're triggering off the same note. So yeah, now we've got record and delayed next on that same button, note 39, which is number one on my MIDI foot pedal. Um, and I'll show you what happens. This doesn't work, unfortunately, and I'll come on to why in a minute. So. Yeah. So you see what happened there. Next got triggered halfway through. Um, I was really confused by this at first. What I did, just reset this. So I went back into my multi-parameter and said, well, if four bars is triggering the button halfway through, well, let's see what happens if I go back into my delayed next. Set the switch time to eight bars. Will that work? And I'll show you what happens there. So I'll try that again. <clears throat> oh, looks to be working. See what happens now though, we've, we're, we're stuck. Stuck on track two. I have to manually select track three. Now, I'm just going to stop.
playback. So what happened there? It did go onto the next track after the four bars, but the next button stayed engaged. It was held down. So then when I hit my pedal one again to do record and next, we didn't get the next <laughs> next um, because the button was essentially sort of already held down. Um, yeah, so I struggled with this for a while. I realized that that obviously wasn't the solution. Um, and it took me a while to work out why, why on four bars it was triggering at two and then why on eight bars it was triggering at four bars, but then staying held down. And I'll show you now, sorry, I'll show you why that was. So if I go back into the multi-parameter, I'm going to set this back to four bars. And what it was, it took me ages to work this out. You've got a transformation shape down here, which you can turn on or off. So if I turn this on, click on that, you get a graph. And what I realized after a while is that this graph is controlling the on off of that button. So if you think of this X axis down the bottom as being your four bars and the Y axis here as being your naught to hundred percent, what it's doing is getting to halfway across where two bars is and it's switching from off to on at 50% because there are only two states off and on. So off is naught to 50% and then on is 50 to hundred. So that's why it was triggering the next button after we'd only got to two bars. So, and then also why, when we put it onto eight bars, it was staying on because we'd, you know, we'd, we'd solved the first part of the equation, but the, the second part, it was still keeping the button on because, you know, we were going for four bars and then four bars. So the solution here is to create another node on this and drag this all the way down to the right hand corner, not all the way in. It, for some reason, it doesn't work when it's there, but if you set it there, so what's going to happen now, we've got four bars. It's going to stay down here for the entirety of that four bars. So it's going to stay off. And then right at the end, it's going to shoot up to on and that button's going to press. So it's going to press that next button right as we get to the end of that first recording and take us to the next track. So with any luck, when I go back to the song, this will work. And here we go. Right. And there you go, it worked. So we've got one button, hitting it once, it's recording onto track one, going onto the next track, hit it again, goes onto the next uh, records, and then goes onto the next track. And that is, it is a solution, but it's not perfect. Um, and the reasons why, I'll, I'll go into probably more detail in my next video, because I want to do a video where I kind of discuss some of the things that I do and don't like about M Super Looper. It's a great plugin, but it's not quite there. Um, and yeah, this, I think this is quite unusual having this trigger, having this switch time set to a, a, an amount of milliseconds. It would be, I think it'd be much better if that worked as a, as a true sync. So you could sync it to, you know, four bars and then rather than going into milliseconds, like when you change the tempo, it would adjust uh, based on the tempo. Um, and then of course you're going to run into problems if you do use different, different length bars for different tracks, which I don't think you can do at the moment with, with the um with the sync mode and with the default bars in m super looper but that would be a problem obviously later on because you'd you'd run into if you've got a, a specific time of four bars but then your next loop is two bars then the button's not going to get triggered because it's going to be waiting for four bars so i'm I'm kind of thinking it would be good to have a, a, a different option here so like this this plugin has been designed with um what what's called checkpoints in mind so it does have 
you know, you, you can turn immediate record off. So it records at the start of the next bar and you can turn immediate track switch off. So it will switch on the next bar, which, um, is a good feature, but it, it would be much better if you also had another one where you could select end of recording, for example. So if it waited to the end of the recording and then you could choose to do a function, then I just think that'd be really good. So yeah, I think I'll talk about that a bit more in, in my next video because, uh, I think this one's gone on long enough. So, uh, yeah, I'll say goodbye.